Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers, and my dear friends, a warm welcome from your pastor Yadi. Forgotten among the lilies, and today we're going to talk about staring chaos in the face. We live in a pain, we live in pain and division in the world, in the church, and within ourselves. There is much anger, hatred, and bitterness. It seems even ever harder to live at peace with each other, to be calm, to have simple joy within our lives, and not to alienate someone just by being. Within ourselves, despite the fact that we have virtuality, every practical reason to be happy, friends, health, material influences, we experience anger, jealousy, and woundedness. Seldom are we satisfied. Seldom are we truly free of bitterness, anger, and feelings of being slighted and overlooked. Very seldom are we fully at peace with life and with others. And beyond this, we live in a world that is full of painful division. It has its own wounds, poverty, social injustice, the inequality, equality, inequality of men and women, racism, abortion, sexual exploitations, narcissistic jumpies, untrustworthy political leaders, and simply millions of persons caught up in a excessive self-interest. It is hard for us as adults in our world to simply love, be understanding, and be at peace with others and with life. We are wounded within and without. The temptation is toward bitterness, anger, withdrawal, and paranoia. That is the road to hell because bitterness is hell. What is needed to stop our slide toward this is reconciliation at every level. What is reconciliation? It is reality that admits many levels. Here I want to speak of reconciliation as personal healing, as a coming inside of ourselves to a new holiness and renewed sense of childlike joy. Reconciliation at this level involves many things. First, it involves the recognition of our woundedness, our neurosis, our bitterness, our narcissism and narrow loyalties and simply our lack of joy. Just as for an alcoholic, there can be no real change before there is the basic admittance of the conditions of helplessness and need, so too in our struggle to come to personal healing. There can be no healing until we admit sickness, and we are ill, compulsive, angry, competitive, bitter, narcissistic, cynical, humorless, paranoid, self-pitying, jealous, somber, and joyless. The roots of this woundedness stretch deep into our past, and beyond our past, into the history of the world. We are not just part of the chain of life, of love, but are likewise part of a chain of neurosis and wounded that stretches back, ultimately, maybe to Adam and Eve. We can 
sometimes point to certain events and persons that have hurt us deeply and blame much of our pain on them. However, these events and persons themselves point still further back to distance events and persons that wounded them. Reconciliation begins when we truly admit this. So long as we pretend otherwise, it is not even meaningful to use the word. When we claim our woundedness, however, we are brought face to face with our own helplessness, our need, our need for God. Then, as Henry Nowen puts it, our hearts become the place where the tears of God and the tears of God's children can merge and become tears of hope. The step the first step in real reconciliation is the tearful acknowledgement of our woundedness, our helplessness, and our sin. In this admission is a painful dying and a joyous rebirth. Ashes makes the best fertilizer. Tears wash away sin. Honesty induces the labor that gives birth to conversion. When we cry honest tears, we are flooded with a desire to pray, to forgive, to serve others, to build a just social order, to live more moral lives, to love beyond resentment and bitterness. That is the movement towards reconciliation and joy. Why? Because searing honestly brings us face to face with our own woundedness and helplessness. Our helplessness, in turn, brings us face to face with the redeeming God. In that encounter, we learn that we are loved sinners. Gratitude is born. A genuine sanctity follows. Gratitude is the key to all. We come to personal healing and to reconciliation with others to the exact extent that we are warmed and vitalized by gratitude. To rid ourselves of resentment, bitterness, jealousy, and paranoia requires a powerful fire and only the gratitude that flows from knowing that we are loved. Loved despite wound and sin is a large enough flame to burn wound from our lives. The rest follows. When we are vitalized by gratitude, we will automatically move toward deeper prayer, wider loyalties, and more embracing heart. Reconciliation begins when we stare our chaos in the face. In that, we will be brought face to face with our helplessness and our need for God. Prayer will then begin, crying out from the very depths of our being. We will be led bare and will realize that we are loved sinners in solidarity with other loved sinners like ourselves. Gratitude, reconciliation, and healing will follow. Come to the one who loves you with his unconditional love. That is the beloved Lord, our shepherd, Jesus Christ. May you find peace within, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. God loves you, my dear ones. Bye.